Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and today we're here for the final installment of our B6702 sew so along. Um, it's been a long one, seven weeks. I, this may be the longest sew along I've done, honestly. Maybe the Huxley bag when I did it? I don't know. Uh, but today we are going to be finishing off our buttons and buttonholes and doing our hems. And um, if you are doing a shirt and not a shirt dress, I actually have a different uh, method I like to use for the hems on my shirt tail hems. And I'm gonna leave a link to that video up above. Um, I use a bias facing basically to finish off my shirt tail hems. I just think number one, it is a kind of a fun added detail. And number two, it just is much easier way to hem, you know, that real um, exaggerated, concave and convex curves that go on with a shirt tail hem. So I will leave uh, that linked up here so you can definitely, if you are making a shirt instead of a shirt dress, you can head over there for that um, help as well. Okay, um, stay tuned to the end of the video because uh, you will see me actually in the dress. Spoiler alert, I'm absolutely in love with it. It's gonna be worn so much this fall. I, I, I'm really head over heels in love with this dress. <laughs> Such a good one for fall. Um, yeah, and even into spring because fall colors are my colors, so I can wear these in spring too. But anyway, <laughs> um, as always, if you'd like to help support the channel, I do have a virtual tip jar with my coffee account. It's down below. Um, it just all, everything goes back into the channel to help make the best sew along and tutorials that I can. Also, if you have any questions whatsoever, you can leave those in the comments below and I will get to those as soon as I can and answer to the best of my ability. All right, guys, thank you for hanging out with me on this sew along. Hopefully this is the one that'll be good to go back to time and time again, anytime you're doing a shirt dress or a button up shirt. Um, hopefully this will be helpful. All right, that's all I've got for today. I will see you guys next week for a tutorial that I'm not sure what it's gonna be yet. So stay tuned for that. <laughs> all right, have a good one. See you soon, bye. Okay, so we're gonna do our hem first and then we will do our buttons and buttonholes. Okay. If you are doing a shirt and need the shirt tail, I should have popped the link to that um, already in the intro. So definitely go over and um, I like to use bias tape or men's ties, whatever, <laughs> basically a bias facing for my shirt tail hems. I just find that the finish is beautiful and um, it just makes it so much easier. But for this uh, shirt dress, because it is a, maybe, I don't even think it's a half circle, um, it's just a flared skirt. <laughs> I've got panels, and um, again, I made my skirt early, uh, if you've been following along with the sew along all the way, um, because it's a cotton lawn, and because there's seven panels, there's not a ton of uh, hem on the bias, and nothing has dropped, so I don't need to level anything off, so that is a good, oops, sorry, a good um, thing. Makes life a little easier. So here is the dress. This is the hem of the dress, and obviously we'll be sewing from one Placket to the other. I've got the wrong side of the dress up. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to fold over about three eighths of an inch. And I do this eyeball. I do three eighths because um, this gets kind of bulky down here and it makes it really hard to do anything narrower really. And I'm gonna start sewing and I'm actually gonna sew right in the middle of this three eighths of an inch. And I'm not gonna start at the edge. I'm gonna start a little bit in like right there. And you'll see why in just a minute um, after I've gone around the horn. But I'm just going to use my fingers to fold it over um, about three eighths, and we're going to sew all the way around. So you'll notice that I didn't go all the way to the edge here. And that's because we've not pressed anything yet, by the way. But I like to go in and cut this at an angle. Just cut off some of that bulk on both sides. Back to the beginning here. <laughs> kind of finger press that in place and then cut that off because when we fold it up again, which we're gonna do just like that, it just looks much cleaner at the end. You can get a much cleaner finish. So now we're gonna go around the whole bottom of the skirt again, but this time we are going to um, turn it again. We're gonna 
so really close to that folded edge. And this time I do start at the very edge. So this technique does put um, two lines of stitching on the wrong side of the dress, but you only see one from the right side. All right, so then once we've done that, you can go give it a good press and your hem is done. So now I'm going to meet you over at the cutting table and I'm gonna show you how I mark my buttonholes. Okay, so we are going to mark our buttonholes. I use a Simflex, I will leave it linked down below. This is great for marking pleats and also for marking buttonholes. Um, this will mark up to eight. I'm gonna put 10 buttons down the front of my dress, so I'll show you how I do that. now. Before we get started, I have marked the apex of my bust right here with this yellow pen. If you can see it, it's right here. I put it on and decided where the fullest part of my bust is because I definitely want a um, buttonhole there. And then I definitely want a buttonhole at my waist seam, which is right here, but I want it to span my waist seam. There's not, because the button band was at, added after the skirt and dress were put together, there's not bulk here. So I can easily span a buttonhole um, across that seam or across, you know, where you want that seam to be, which would be very nice. So what we're gonna do is place this, and I'm basically, what I'm trying to do here, I'm going to ignore my, um, I mean, there will be a buttonhole up here in the um, uh, collar band, but um, that, you don't have to have evenly spaced up into that. So I'm just kind of gonna go, most of the time, traditionally, you're two and a half inches down. Um, I mean, you can do what you want, but you're usually two and a half inches down. But I'm not, I really want to be the bottom to be right there. So this is just a matter of kind of playing around with this. And also keep in mind that you don't have to ha go all the way to the bottom of your skirt. And I, I won't. Um, I don't want it there though. So maybe I will stretch it out. Okay, I think that looks good. So I mark the bottom of my buttonholes. Actually, that does put that right there. And that is counted in the 10, I guess, up there at the collar band. But if you have to, that's a good one to skip out on if you need to skip out on one. Okay, so I'm a little above this, but I think that that's gonna be just fine. So now I'm going to mark, and I have markings here, um, half inch is where I want to mark. So I'm marking the, again, the bottom. So I'm just putting my marker in here and doing a dot. And I'm lining this up the same spot. To the edge of the dress and then I'm marking it at the half inch mark on here. Okay, so there's eight. So now to get nine and ten, you know, if this accidentally gets kind of messed up, that's okay. You just need to match. Like there's that one, that one, that one. And that's seven and eight. See, that's eight, so I need two more. So we'll do nine and 10. So I have about, I don't know, eight inches of unbuttoned 
part of my dress, which is absolutely fine. So it's probably hard for you to see, especially on this, and I can barely see it, which is fine, but I've marked what I want the bottom of my buttonholes, and I've got 10 that go all the way down the dress. So now we're gonna go over to the um, my home sewing machine. That's where I do my buttonholes. And um, yeah, I'll show you how I do my buttonholes. Okay, we're over here at my home machine. This is my buttonhole foot. So I basically stick a button in here. I mean, I don't want it too snug, so I wanna be able to button, easily button, but you want it somewhat tight. <laughs> okay, so that's on. Um, I have a buttonhole, um, an automatic buttonhole stitch selected on my machine. It's going to be different for everybody. And then, oh, I forgot to mention, you are going to be putting your buttonholes on the right placket when worn. So when you have the dress on your body, the buttonholes go on the right side. I'm actually going to start at the bottom of this dress and go up. I actually hate putting in the one that's um, let me find the bottom one. I hate doing the, um, the one that's in the collar band because it's stressful. <laughs> okay. And, oh, this is hard to do because I can't see up over it. Hold on. I may be blocking your view. So I'm just going to line up. There it is. That mark. And then I literally just press the, the, the gas and off it goes. Obviously, I need to trim up some threads, but there you have it. So I'm just going to do this nine more times, and then I will show you I put fray check, um, and I'll show you how I do that in just a second. Okay, so I've got all of my buttonholes done. Um, I do them all vertical, and then I do a horizontal one here on the collar band. So that one is um, completely done. So now they are ready to be cut open. Now, I first use... Ray check. This is by Dritz. I will, um, I get all this stuff at Wawac. Oh, I'm also can't get it open with one hand. <laughs> so what I do with all of my buttonholes is I put a line of fray check inside that buttonhole and then I hit it with the iron and a little steam. Fog up the lens here. This helps keep it from hardening really bad. And then once I've done that side, I flip it over and do the same thing to the back side. So that is step one. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that to all rest of the nine of the buttons and then also do it on the opposite side. And then I'll meet you back, meet you back at the cutting table so we can cut these open and then mark our buttons. Okay, once everything has been fray checked, ooh, it's time to cut open the buttonholes and I use my buttonhole chisel. I'll leave a link to it down below. And basically you just carefully place it in the center of your buttonhole and press down. Ouch. Okay, when you've got your buttonholes all cut open, we need to mark the buttons. And the way that I do this is I close the dress and you just wanna line up, so this is wrong sides together. So this is the wrong side of the dress. So I'm closing it in the front, but wrong sides together. This is a great way to make sure your, um, you know, your two sides are matching up. You know, you want your, your waist seam to match up and all of that. So once you've lined them up on top of each, each other like this. Um, that lines up pretty darn well. You're just gonna take a pen and stick it through to the other side. 
I'll obviously do this all the way down. But then it puts the pen or the um, button in the same spot on the other placket. And then you're just gonna mark where that pin goes through. So I'm gonna do that all the way down the placket and then uh, sew my buttons on. I use a machine to do that, but obviously you can do that by hand. And then I'll meet you with the, um, the dummy and we'll do a little bit of talking before you see the final dress. And there she is all finished. So there we go. This was a very long sew along um, or many weeks, but I hope this was helpful in making shirts and shirt dresses. You can see my sweet vintage buttons that are on there. I'm glad I went with the white. I think that looks nice. Um, yeah, but she's all finished. So if you have any questions, as always, leave them down below and stay tuned. I will now show you um, me in the dress and I will see you guys next week. Bye.